Pick an artist. What artist do you relate to? Relate to just means what artist do you find most similar to yourself or find that you enjoy their artwork? Okay, so keep in mind about which artist you relate most to during this video. The first artist we're going to talk about is Jim Dine. Jim Dine is well known for his hearts. He is inspired um, by the simple things in life, such as tools, animals, hearts, and really bright colors. Other artists consider him a pop artist, but he does not feel like he is. On this side, we have a bright, colorful, maybe even smooth looking heart. And on this side, it is an example or a, a zoomed in picture of one of his sculptures. Lots and lots of different textures on that sculpture there. Here are a couple of examples of his tools. On the left, we have pictures of his tools all in black and white, maybe a little splash of blue here and there. And then on this side, on the right, we have a toilet brush. Huh. Not really what I'm going to make a picture of, but whatever. All right, let's watch a quick little video of Jim Dine. Pop artist. He doesn't think he is. Lots of texture in his work. Textures the way something feels or the way it looks like it feels. His hearts look like they feel all kinds of different ways. Smooth, bumpy, rough, hard, soft. All right, so that is an example of Jim Dine. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. Our next artist is Jasper Johns. Jasper Johns is inspired by United States. He loves the flag. He loves the map of the United States. All those things inspire Jasper Johns. Um, he's also does letters and numbers. They became his subject matter later on. So Jasper Johns is almost an abstract artist. Here is an image of one of his American flag pieces. And over on this side on the right is a map of the United States. This is zoomed in. So I see Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and it's lots and lots of texture. Look, the paint's even dripping down in some areas. And on this side, we have the alphabet in art and over here in numbers in art. So be really mindful of which artist you relate most to so that we can, um, we can do a corresponding art piece. This is a video of Jasper Johns. I'm just going to fast forward it here. And most symbolic and familiar of all was the American flag. Against the backdrop of the Cold War, was this a political statement? Is it subversive or celebratory? Or has any such meaning simply dissolved in the thick layers of geometrically abstract paint? Wow, he's got some texture on his art pieces too. So I wanted to show you um, just a few little pieces of Jasper Johns. Notice the different colors on these pieces of work. This is his map. You almost can't even tell it's a map. It's so abstract. All right, let's go back to our PowerPoint. Our next artist is Paul Klee. Paul Klee was inspired by his travels. He uses geometric shapes and colors, almost an abstract looking piece. Over here, we have geometric shapes into what Miss Cunningham thinks is a cityscape. And over here, I'm not sure what this is, but I do see geometric shapes. I am sure of that. And I see different colors. Here's some more of Paul Klee's work. On the left, we have geometric shapes again into what I feel like might be a cityscape. And over here on the right, we have geometric shapes into some sort of portrait. We have a video of Paul Klee. Let's see what the video has to say. After we skip the ad. Okay. Okay. 
Here is one of his cityscapes. There's the cat we just saw in the PowerPoint. Lots of geometric shapes. Wow, look at this. This might be a cityscape too. This is almost abstract. We can't really tell sometimes what we're looking at. Other times we can kind of tell. This to me looks like a plant with some water. This definitely is some sort of forest. This is abstract and cubism. Let's go back to our PowerPoint and see what our next artist is. Our next artist is Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso showed a passion for art at a very early age. He used crystal cubism art, which means he used geometric shapes or shapes with collage. So we all know what collage is. It's large overlapping pieces um, of paper. So his work was very flat. Some he used collage. These two look like they were painted. But I want you to notice how um, it's not really abstract because we know this is a person, but it is cubism because it's broken up into pieces. We have a large eye, a regular eye, over here a large eye, regular eye. It's kind of silly to look at. Here's some more of his portraits. They almost don't make sense. Our brain has to really look at it and think about them for a little while. Let's see what YouTube has to say about Pablo Picasso. This is a painting, but it's not cubism. It's called realism. Our next one, here we go. This is a cubism piece of work, lots of different colors, geometric shapes, lines. Here's another piece of his work, a portrait. And I'm going to end the video on this portrait. Notice that it doesn't really make sense when we first look at it, right? But the more we look, we can tell that it, yep, it definitely is a portrait. All right, back to our PowerPoint. Our next artist is M.C. Escher. M.C. Escher was a math-inspired artist, although he considered himself horrible at math. His art is well known to scientists and mathematicians. His work defies gravity, which means it kind of messes with your brain when you look at it. The steps are going every which way. There's people on the steps walking upside down, right side up. If you really sit and study an M.C. Escher piece of work, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because the people are going downstairs but upstairs and upstairs but downstairs and the stairs never descend so it doesn't really make sense to our brain. Lots of different uh, mathematicians and scientists enjoy M.C. Escher. So here's a little video of M.C. Escher. I'm going to be quiet and let you watch the people walking. This is an animated version of his work. Obviously, the people don't really move on his in his work. But it kind of gives you a good idea of how the stairs are working. Okay, so that is M.C. Escher. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. I think we have two more artists. Our next artist is Jacob Lawrence. Jacob Lawrence is an um, African-American artist that portrays African-American culture. His illustrations were of everyday life, people interacting, people at um, work, people at the park, people playing. Um, his work has color, shape, and pattern in it. Here's some examples of Jacob Lawrence's work. On the left, we have an African-American, um, looks like a workshop. I see tools. I see them working in action. They're not sitting around resting 
And on this side, I see um, a group of people maybe walking on a bridge. There's something happening over here with a dog or some sort of animal. And on the left, again, um, people at a workshop working. I see hammers and saws and wood. And over here, I see maybe a leisure walk in a city. So lots of action and movement in Jacob Lawrence's work. We have a very cool video. This is actually Jacob Lawrence working in his studio. Big areas, not my detail, and get a feeling for the overall composition. I'm working on paper. That's the artist, Jacob paper. Lawrence. This is a street scene, and uh, which I did quite a bit of. He's working on a street scene. He says he uses pencil first. I grew up, I grew up in New York's Harlem community, and I, throughout my life, I've Love the street this is pictures of his, and there, this is his work. The black and white are pictures of his city that he grew up in. There it is right there. The street scene is a theme or a subject I've been doing for years. And I think I was so impressed when we moved to New York. I moved to, my, my family moved to New York when I was about 13. That was in 1930. And I was so overwhelmed by the, what we, the tall buildings, the fire escapes, that I, I just, uh, that, that has stuck with me all these years. So I use that as a theme in, in many of my works. So he was inspired by his younger years growing up in New York City. All right, our last artist is Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh has artwork including landscapes, still lifes, and portraits. The brush strokes from his paintbrushes and the colors he used show emotion. The best, he is best known for the starry night. Now the one on the left is sunflowers and I want you to see how bright and colorful it is compared to his portrait on the right, which is blue and kind of sad or cold. One feel, the one on the left feels very warm and exciting, and the one on the right feels kind of cold and sad, maybe? Here is the Starry Night. We're all familiar with that on the left. And then on the right is a, I guess you could call it a still life, but it portrays his room when he um, was younger. Let's see what we have on Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh was living in Arles in southern France, waiting with excitement for his friend Gauguin to join him. In August, he began work on a series of 12 sunflower pictures to decorate the studio in which he hoped they would paint together. He wanted these pictures, he said, to be like stained glass windows in a Gothic church. He completed four before the season was over, and later, when Gauguin had come and gone, made two replicas of these earlier works. This may be one of the two later pictures. It is signed simply Vincent on the vase itself and is the only version of the subject in an American museum. Painted in thick stabbing brush strokes, these sunflowers by Van Gogh take on a life of their own. Bursts of intense chrome yellow and ochre with touches of red blaze forth, as the artist himself put it, against a turquoise background. He magnified the energy of these enormous blossoms by packing them so tightly into the viewer's space. Later he wrote that sunflowers may symbolize gratitude. Okay, so we talked about a lot of different artists here. And now we need to decide what artists we relate most to. So in a few minutes, you're going to get a piece of paper that says, pick an artist. You're going to decide what artist you relate most to. Jim Dine, Jasper Johns, Paul Klee, Pablo Picasso, M.C. Escher, Jacob Lawrence, or Vincent Van Gogh. 
the one you relate to the most, you color the circle red. The one you relate to second, you color the circle yellow. And the last one on your mind, you color blue. Okay, don't forget to put your name up at the top and maybe even your grade. If there is time, you can draw a picture of your idea in the square. So if you picked Jim Dine, maybe you want to draw a picture of a heart in the square and just, you know, brainstorm about what your next project is going to be. All right, boys and girls, you are very, very good listeners. Let's start our project.